So you're taking a look at the inside of the upper arm, so essentially right here. Familiar muscle, you can see the triceps, and another familiar muscle called the biceps, and we've got the ulnar nerve right here. Welcome to the Anatomy Lab, everyone. Today, we're gonna show you a real human arm that has been dissected so that you can truly see what's happening when you hit this structure that we nickname the funny bone. Not such a great name, and we'll talk about why. We're also gonna give you some tests that you can try at home that even clinicians use to see if there's a real problem with this funny bone structure. So let's jump right into all of this anatomical awesomeness. So let's start with the name funny bone. Well, it's not a bone you irritate when you hit the inside of your elbow. It's a nerve called the ulnar nerve. Now the ulnar nerve originates off of this nerve complex in the neck called the brachial plexus. This is a complex or a plexus of 17 nerves and the ulnar nerve is one of those 17. But it's one of the few that makes it all the way through the arm down to the hand. So let's show you its pathway on the cadaver dissection here. So you're taking a look at the inside of the upper arm, so essentially right here. Familiar muscle, you can see the triceps, and another familiar muscle called the biceps, and we've got the ulnar nerve right here. Pretty crazy, right? And you can see we've dissected it out of this tissue here, and it runs down the inside of the upper arm and comes to the inside of the elbow, but really on the back side of that inner elbow. That's gonna be an important point in a minute, but then we lose it in the tissue there, and it runs through a tunnel called the ulnar tunnel. And that tunnel is created by this muscle called the flexor carpi ulnaris. For you anatomy geeks, that's a great name. Carpi means wrist, so this muscle is flexion of the wrist and it's on the ulnar side. But then we have the nerve emerge out of that tunnel through here, running down with the ulna and this underneath this muscle here, and then comes down to the wrist. Now, it does not go through the carpal tunnel. Many of you have heard of that but it runs underneath some of this tissue through here, but then flares onto the hand. So this nerve is one of the most commonly irritated or injured nerves. Almost every single one of you has irritated it to some level. But why is that? And that has to do with the irrelevant anatomy around the elbow. Now remember, we pulled up the nerve right here, but right here where I'm tapping, that's bony tissue right there, bony tissue underneath some of that thin connective tissue here. So if you take a look over at Jeffrey right here, on the back side of the elbow here, or this landmark, this is called the medial epicondyle because it's on the medial side. Now there's a little groove running behind there and that's where the ulnar nerve runs. It's called the ulnar groove or the groove for the ulnar nerve. And what happens here is there's not much protecting the nerve here except skin and connective tissue. When you compare that to other nerves going through the upper limb, the majority of those nerves are covered by muscle and other structures that protect them. But would you bonk right there I'll have to wash that later. You smash it right against that groove right there and it sends the zap down the arm. Now because of the pathway, we can obviously know if you hit right there, there's gonna be some pain there, but the zapping, we can definitely understand that zapping sensation runs down this pathway and then onto the hand. And a lot of people will feel tingling and numbness in the hand. Other people with more severe ulnar nerve issues can also have weakness of muscles. So why do you get the tingling in the hand? And why do some people get weakness of muscles? Well, to understand that, we wanna go into a little bit of detail about how nerves work. And to do that, I have my extension cord analogy. So let me bring the extension cord in so that we can make our little comparison or our analogy here. Obviously, here's the extension cord and you can see the ulnar nerve here. So a lot of you have heard of nerves and neurons. How do they relate? Are they different? What's going on there? So this can help us with that. If I were to cut through this extension cord, you'd see all these little copper wires running through. It's very similar to the nerve here. Both have this outer covering to protect the wires inside. Inside of the nerve, we'd have little tiny wires called neurons. So a whole bunch of neurons are contained within the structure that we call the nerve. Now, they send the electrical signals kind of similar to the wires inside the extension cord here. So when we talk about that, those neurons can be further classified into what we call sensory neurons or motor neurons. Now the sensory neurons go to things like skin and bring in sensation from tissues, whereas motor neurons, they control muscles. So inside this ulnar nerve, we have these different types of neurons that are gonna to go to different tissues 
in the hand and the forearm. Now, most of us, when we hit the funny bone or what we know now as the ulnar nerve, we really focus on that zap and that tingly sensation in the hand because those sensory neurons or those sensory nerve branches from the ulnar nerve go to a very specific place on your hand. Yes, I'm very proud with my stylish gloves painted with the cutaneous field of the ulnar nerve. So all that black is where you would see where the ulnar nerve controls. And so next time you bonk your funny bone, see if you can notice that sensation of half your ring finger and then all of your pinky finger. However, if you end up sleeping like me with your arm or elbow flex behind your head for some odd weird reason, you can put compression or tension on that nerve. So take a look at the cadaver. When you actually straighten the elbow or extend it, you get more laxity on the actual nerve and it's more loosey goosey. However, when you flex it and the more you flex it, the more tension you put on it and it even compresses or is more likely to be compressed in that tunnel that I mentioned earlier called the ulnar tunnel. So I'm sleeping like this. I'd often wake up in the middle of the night and yes, have that tingling, but because I'm a nerd, I would do one of those tests to see if I also had muscle weakness. And one of the most simple tests was just abduct your fingers. And I initially couldn't abduct my fingers because the nerve had been compressed for a couple hours. And that's one of the muscles that this nerve controls. And I'm gonna show you on the cadaver. You see these little muscles on the back side here in between the bones here? These are called the inner osseae muscles or the dorsal inner osseae. And they help you abduct and adduct your fingers. That's one of the tests doctors will do to see, okay, does a person have more like chronic ulnar neuropathy? And we'd literally just stick our hands in there and this they'd try to squeeze together like this, that would be one test. And then we'd hold their fingers together and they'd try to open them up. And you'd compare with the good side to see if there was any strength deficits. So that's a test that you can do if you're geeky like me and you've compressed your ulnar nerve for an extended period of time to see if you also not just have sensory deficits, but also have strength deficits. So a couple last things I wanna mention. Typically, again, most of us just bonk this thing or sleep weird and it's a temporary thing. Others have experienced another temporary thing where if you think of this, like moving over this little bony protuberance right here, sometimes what people will get like it flicking over like a guitar string, like it's flicking over that bone and that'll send a nice zap. And there's just a little bit of anatomical variation with how deep that groove is on certain people and how tight the connective tissues are. So when they move, some are more prone to having it slide out. Um, some people will actually call it ulnar nerve dislocation. And sometimes it doesn't hurt much, but when it kind of flicks over that side of the bone like a guitar string, ooh, 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 it can send a nice zap. The other people that have more chronic issues with this, it can be from repetitive movements. And as you guys remember, flexing the elbow can continually put tension and pull on the nerve. Most of us do okay with our everyday activities, but some people, because of just some variations in there, uh, the tightness of the tunnel or the narrowness, I guess I could say, of the tunnel, can be more prone to inflammation and compression in this area. In that case, sometimes in the clinic, I'll tell people we need to make sure that you um, limit your repetitive motions, obviously. Sometimes if they're sleeping with their arm bent, we'll put them in a brace so they can't bend their arm to a certain degree. And that'll sometimes help limit the inflammation and the irritation of that nerve. And the last thing, if it gets really bad and if they can't solve it with some more of those conservative therapies that I mentioned, they will do surgery which can remove or transpose the nerve out of that groove, or they can go through that tunnel and open it up a little bit, like release the tunnel, create more space for the nerve so it's less likely to get compressed. As always, thanks for watching everyone. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, blow up our comment section below, and until next time, protect that funny bone, what we know as the ulnar nerve.